Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin and we've got another low-cost laptop to take a look at today. We got in the Acer Aspire 1. This is their 2018 version and I'll put the model number in the video description so you can get uh, the exact match here to what we're looking at. Uh, $249 for this one. Very similar actually to the HP Stream 14 we looked at last week that cost the same and also has very similar system specifications. So you might hear me talk about that computer a little bit in the course of this review, but we'll focus on what this machine is all about in a minute or two. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, nobody is paying for this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own and nobody has approved or reviewed what you're about to see before I uploaded it. So let's get to it now and see what this laptop is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. The big difference between this one and the HP is the display. They have the same size display, but this one is running at a higher resolution. This is a 1080p display versus what is effectively a 720p on the HP device. You'll have more resolution, things will look a little bit nicer. The display isn't all that great. It is what they call a TN display, so your uh, viewing angles might drop off a bit when you're looking at it from the side, but I'm actually quite pleased overall with how this display looks for something in a low-cost computer. It is a little on the dim side, but again, you're getting the full 1080p here, and I think it will uh, look a little nicer when you are tapping away on your new laptop. What's also interesting about this one is that although it's not a two-in-one, uh, the display has a big range of motion here, as you can see. You can't quite put it into tent mode, but it certainly will lay flat and go down a little further than that. So it's definitely a little more kid-proof, perhaps, than some of the other laptops out there that might risk having their display snapped off. There is some uh, range to the hinge on this one. It is a fanless device powered by an Intel N4000 processor. That's a Celeron chip. Uh, from their Gemini Lake family of processors. Same chip that's in the HP Stream 14. And like the 14 from HP, it also has four gigs of RAM and 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. However, nothing is upgradable on this one. We did find with the HP, it was probably uh, possible to swap out the RAM on that one, maybe go to eight gigs. Uh, this one is uh, just locked down. The motherboard has uh, all the stuff soldered on and you're not going to be doing any upgrades to it. It does have 802.11 AC wireless and Bluetooth 4.1 built in, so you can connect up to your networks, obviously, and also uh, attach up game controllers, mice, and other Bluetooth devices. It weighs 3.64 pounds or 1.6 kilograms, so the weight uh, is about the same as what we saw on the HP. I do like the keyboard on this Acer a bit more than prior Acers I've looked at. The keys feel a little bit larger to me, which is good, uh, but they added this row of keys here that was messing me up a bit. I am a, a typing traditionalist, and I look for my backspace in a certain spot on the edge of the keyboard, and I kept hitting the home key by accident. So there might be some uh, relearning of the keyboard here if you are not used to having keys uh, next to your enter backspace uh, column here, so just bear that in mind. I'm not as crazy about the trackpad on this one as I was about the HP trackpad. It is a little spongier, but it does get the job done, but not as good as the HP. So the keyboard's okay. Trackpad, eh, uh, they could have done a little better on the trackpad, but at this price, there are things that are sacrificed. Now, there are some things here that surprise me, though. Uh, one is that 1080p display, which again is good to see at this price point. Uh, the other is that you have a gigabit ethernet jack right here. You can actually plug in hardwired networking to this device if you wish. So that was a nice little uh, surprise to have on there. Next to it right here is a Kensington lock, so you can lock it down on a desk. Uh, you have an HDMI output here. This will do uh, 4K at 30 frames per second, so you can get out to larger displays if you want. Uh, this blue port here is a USB 3.0 slot there, uh, so you can plug in high-speed devices like a hard drive or something like that. Next to it is an SD card slot, but as you can see here, the card sticks out quite a bit, so you're not going to be augmenting that uh, 64 gigabytes of storage often with a card in there just because it sticks out so far, so just bear that in mind if you are curious about that. On the other side, you've got a combo headphone microphone jack and two more USB ports, but these are slower USB 2.0 ports, so this is where I would connect up keyboards and mice and devices that don't have as much uh, throughput needs as a hard drive might. So your hard drives will run slower on this side versus the other USB port on the other side. I would have liked to have seen maybe one more USB 3 slot, but on this side, just USB 2. 
and right here is where you plug in your power adapter. Uh, not much else on here. You've got downward firing speakers that, you know, sound about what you would expect out of a $249 computer. Not all that great. Uh, the battery life on here is also not as good as the HP was. So we're looking at about five hours for uh, regular usage on this, which is a bit lower than the seven or eight or so that we expect to get out of the HP Stream 14. Uh, so if battery life is important, the HP might be better, but if you want a nicer, uh, higher resolution display, uh, this one might be a little bit better for that. So it's interesting to see how uh, different manufacturers make different choices to hit a price point. So you have some uh, differences here to consider uh, when you're out shopping. So again, higher resolution here, better battery life on the HP. Now don't expect crazy build quality on one of these inexpensive laptops. It is all plastic, but it does feel uh, pretty well put together here. It's not uh, flopping around all that much. You've got a good amount of uh, stability to the hinge system here and by and large for a $250 machine it is not that bad. So now that we've seen the hardware let's see how it performs. So let's begin things with web browsing. We'll start off with my YouTube channel with a video running at 1080p at 60 frames per second. We didn't experience any real issues playing back that video with the Edge browser. Uh, we have found that Edge does higher end video on YouTube better than Chrome does, and I've got a video down below that explains why, so you can check that out. But overall, good video watching experience here from all of your favorite streaming sites. NASA.gov, which is a very multimedia rich website, loaded up very nice on here, pretty snappy and responsive. So I think for basic web browsing, you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. We also ran the speedometer benchmark test, and there we got a score on Google Chrome of 68.51, which puts it pretty much within the margin of error from what we saw on the HP stream. That is the version 1.0 of that test. On the 2.0 test, we also got a similar score, 39.1 for this one, and 38.1 for the HP Stream 14. And Office tasks are very good on here too. We ran uh, some desktop publishing on Microsoft Word and you can see how everything responded pretty quickly there. It's been really neat to see how just these basic tasks feel quicker now on uh, some of these computers that we've seen over the last year or two. There's been some really nice improvement at this segment of the market. Uh, this computer as well as the HP Stream 14 both come with a one-year subscription to Office 365 as well. So that usually costs about $60 or $70 for the year. You get it as part of the package with these, which I think enhances the value a bit on them. But one thing to note on this machine, as well as the HP Stream 14, is that they come preloaded with Windows 10 S. And what that means is that you can only install apps through the Windows App Store. You can't bring in your own software out of the box but they do offer you a way to turn off that S mode and allow you to install regular software on it after you do that. That's free to do, uh, but just know it's an extra step when you get the computer. You have to disable S mode first. Now, one thing these laptops are not great at is playing games. So you're not going to get Fortnite or anything really all that new and popular to function well on this, but there are some things that can kind of run. So here's a good idea as to what you might expect. Uh, we started off with Minecraft. This is the Java version of Minecraft that most people are still running because it's moddable and everything. And we didn't get great performance here, about 15 to 20 frames per second running at 1080p with the Optifine performance enhancing plugin installed. So I was expecting maybe a little bit better performance out of this and the HP on Minecraft, but it really uh, isn't quite there for that game. Uh, the Windows 10 edition of Minecraft might run a little better on these, but you don't get all the modifications and whatnot. We also ran uh, Rocket League, which is a more modern game. Uh, that one we ran at 720p with all of the settings turned down, and there we were getting about 15 to 30 frames per second, give or take. Uh, so it really isn't all that playable for Rocket League and those kinds of games either. But older games like Half-Life 2 here did run very nice on this hardware, even at 1080p. Uh, we were getting very close to 60 frames per second on this game. Very, very playable. And if you are uh, looking through the Steam or the GOG stores, you're going to find a lot of great stuff that will run actually pretty nicely on here from about a decade ago or so. So retro emulation, old PC games, DOS games, all that stuff should work fine on here. But the newer stuff, I think you're probably going to want to get a more powerful and more expensive PC. And on the 3DMark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 2,425. 
Uh, that compares to about 2,150 that we tested on the HP Stream 14. Uh, but really, these things are within the margin of error of each other. Not great gaming machines, good for the older stuff, as I mentioned, and overall performing about where this hardware should perform. And we also ran the 3D Mark stress test on the laptop to see what happens while it's under load. Uh, typically, with a low-cost laptop like this one, the hotter it gets, the slower it runs uh, so that it doesn't overheat. And this test measures uh, what kind of slowdown to expect. We got a score of 93.2%, which is a failing grade, but that's to be expected on these types of computers. So it's going to slow down a little bit if it's under load, but I think generally the kinds of things you're going to be running on this, uh, you really won't notice all that much of a slowdown. So from the thermal perspective, I think it's going to be fine. It will get a little warm to the touch, but it's nothing to be concerned about. And we also ran Cody with a Jellyfish test suite file. This is 140 megabits per second, 4K. 10 bit and it was running uh, just fine on here with no drop frames. One of the nice things Intel has been doing is bringing on more advanced video decoding even into their lower end processors and here it was running just fine and if you are going to play back some high end video no issues here at all and it certainly will play back a lot of your Netflix and other stuff just fine too. And one last thing to take a look at and that is running alternative operating systems. We've got Ubuntu 18.04 running on here right now. And this one does a little better than the HP Stream was doing uh, because this one has Wi-Fi drivers that are compatible with uh, Linux, which the HP lacks. So when we booted up the HP, we couldn't get it uh, on the Wi-Fi. This one seems to be working fine with that. The video drivers are working. The audio drivers are working. Bluetooth works. Even the Ethernet was working here when we booted up Ubuntu. So this might be a, a fun little laptop to pick up if you do want to try experimenting with alternative operating systems in a portable form factor. Good stuff. So altogether, this is a very good value from a major manufacturer, and it's great that we are still seeing major manufacturers put out really usable computers at a low price, and I think $249 is very reasonable for what they're providing here. Now, the choice between this one and the HP Stream 14 we looked at last week comes down to this. If you need better battery life, the HP is the right laptop for you. If you want a nicer display, then consider the Acer. They're going to perform the same, but the big difference is battery life versus display resolution. Uh, if you are someone who's looking to install more than just Windows, uh, then this one is probably the better choice because it does have better out-of-the-box Ubuntu support than what we saw on the HP. But really, it is a toss-up between the two, and it's really nice to have a very concrete difference between them, battery life or display resolution, and uh, you can take your pick from there. If I had to choose, I'd probably go with this one just because I do prefer a 1080p display to a 720p display, but again, everyone's needs are a little bit different. So that's going to do it for our look here at the new Acer Aspire 1. Again, I'm really happy to see such great choices at the low end of the market, and we'll try to find some more options for you to see here on the channel in the near future. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta. The Four Guys with Quarters podcast. Tom Albrecht. Bill Reiner. And Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.